I want to share just a, a scripture with you tonight and get our hearts ready to, to receive. Uh, how many of you have been here for the last couple of Wednesdays that we've been under the teaching of Pastor Keith Moore? Is that right? And so I, I want to encourage you in this. Um, we're not just hearers of the word, is that right? But we're doers of the word, right? And, and so when, when the Lord laid this on our hearts, because, um, you know, there's truths. There's truths in God's word that he knows what we need to make us free. Is that right? And to live victoriously. And, and so we believe this was the direction of the Lord. And uh, we're giving our whole hearts to it. But how many of you know if we come in any service, when we assemble together, if we're coming to just hear and without the intent to apply, the word will never work in our lives. Amen. So we come to hear so that we can apply. We come to hear so that we can apply. Is that right? Not just hearers of the word, but doers of the word. And this is part of our growing up. This is part of Jesus uh, being formed more and more and more on the inside of us. And no matter what topic we think that we've got a really good handle on, here, here, here is the downfall of many, many Christians. I know. We hear the word and we say, I know. But if we know what we think we know, then there would be joy on our countenance. Because the Word of God, when we know the truth, it sets us free. And a free countenance doesn't look like this. Amen. And, and so all of us, no matter what stage of development that we are in, and no matter how much we think we know, how much we have applied in our lives, there's still more that we can know. There's still more understanding. There's still more revelation. And when we do what Proverbs 4 tells us to do, which is attend to his word, there is no other word that's going to set us free. There's no amount of talking to a friend there's no amount of talking to a counselor, and I'm not being rude, and I'm not being mean, but this is the truth. You'll know the truth, and the truth will set you free. And what is the truth? God's Word. God's Word. God's Word is truth. So we come to hear it so that we can apply it. Amen. Amen. Adam, if you want to put that scripture up for us. Um, this is Ephesians 6, 10 through 19 in uh, the Passion Translation. I want him to leave it up there. I have written this out as a confession for myself. So I'm going to read it as I've written it out. But you follow it up there, okay? It says, I am supernaturally infused with strength through my life union with the Lord Jesus. Can y'all say that with me? J just say it after me. I am supernaturally infused with strength through my life union with the Lord Jesus. Yeah, now I, let, me, let me preface this by saying in John 6, 63, Jesus tells us that he says, My words are spirit and life. Amen. And so what we want to do right now, what I am attempting to get us to do, and especially with us not having worship right now, it's been a long day. Our mind can be in a jillion different uh, places right now, but we want to connect. We want to connect uh, with our spirit man. And so we want to say spirit words so we can get connected to our spirit. Amen. So we're connecting to our spirit, and we're saying what God says. Amen. It says, I stand victorious with the force of his explosive power flowing in and through me. Say that after me. I stand victorious with the force of his explosive power flowing in and through me. 
<laughs> I put on God's complete set of armor provided for me so that I will be protected as I fight against the evil strategies of the accuser. My hand-to-hand -hand combat is not with human beings, but with the highest principalities and authorities operating in rebellion under the heavenly realms. For they are a powerful class of demon gods and evil spirits that hold this dark world in bondage. Because of this, I wear all the armor that God provides, and I am protected as I confront the slanderer, for I am destined for all things, and I will rise victorious. Come on now, say it after me. For I am destined for all things, and I will rise victorious. I put on truth as a belt to strengthen myself to stand in triumph. I put on holiness as the protective armor that covers my heart. I stand on my feet alert and I am always ready to share the blessings of peace. In every battle, I take faith as my wraparound shield for it is able to extinguish the blazing arrows coming at me from the evil one. We're talking spiritual warfare. <clears throat> Amen? And so I just want to remind us here that there is no battle there is no warfare that is going on in your life right now that is not common to man. Amen. But aren't you so glad for the word of God that tells us if we will take his word, if we will raise the shield of faith, if we'll use the sword of the spirit in our mouth, that we will rise victorious. Amen. <clears throat> I embrace the power of salvation's full deliverance like a helmet to protect my thoughts from lies. Oh, come on now. This is how the enemy this is how the enemy comes at us with lies. This is spiritual warfare. And what he's trying to do is get us to come into agreement with him. I embrace the power of salvation's full deliverance, like a helmet to protect my thoughts from lies. And I take the mighty, razor-sharp, spirit sword of the spoken word of God. I pray passionately in the spirit as I constantly intercede with every form of prayer at all times. And I pray the blessings of God upon all his believers. And pray also that God's revelation would be released through me every time I preach the wonderful mystery of the hope-filled gospel. Amen. Amen. A good confession, guys. A good confession to have in your mouth. And you know that you're a preacher. Preaching Jesus. Everyone. Everywhere. Amen. Amen. So let's do this. Again, what we're doing is we are connecting with our spirit man. We're connecting with our spirit man. So I want to hear you. Let's pray in the spirit. Let's do it for 10 seconds. I want to hear you. All right. Alabor shata la basiki, inda la baso kondo la basiki, ondo do la basik alabor shanda la da da basiki, elaboria siki di anda la babasiki, inda la babasiki dia. You say, Mona, that just seems weird. Why are we doing this again? Because we're connecting with our spirit man. Amen. Uh, bypassing our head and all the things that have gone on during the day and we're setting ourselves up to receive the word of God. Amen. One more time, 10 seconds. Thank you, Lord. So, Father, we thank you that tonight as we are assembled together, Father, we humble ourselves before you. And we say that we have ears that hear. And we have a heart to obey. We set ourselves. We, we, we come up under you and receive the engrafted word of God that has the ability to save our souls. And so I thank you, Father, for it. I thank you that in this house tonight, that revelation knowledge flows. That revelation knowledge flows into every heart in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Father, that in the receiving of your word is freedom. Hallelujah. 
So I thank you, Father. I thank you for it tonight in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. Hey, be sure we're coming to hear what God says, right? If we're really expecting to hear what he says, then we don't look like this. And again, I'm not trying to be rude. I'm trying to help us. If Jesus was sitting in front of you and he was talking to you, would it be super important to you that you remembered tomorrow what he said to you tonight? And so if it's important to us, then we're going to write it down. We're going to make a really, really big, big deal out of it. All right? Recently, we, we talked about this from Mark eleven twenty four and Matthew 21, where Jesus spoke to that fig tree. He spoke to the fig tree, and it dried up from the roots. And when the disciples saw it the following day and they remarked about it, he said in Matthew 21, if you have faith and don't doubt, you could not only do this which is done to the fig tree. Hold on, hold on. Did he just tell them they could do that? He did. You'll not only do what was done to the fig tree, but if you spoke to that mountain, he's telling them they can do what he just did and even bigger, greater things. If they'd have faith and doubt not. And of course you understand all those disciples are not God. Human beings like us. No. When Jesus rebuked this fever, he's showing us what to do with fevers. Now I know in our educated society, People scoff at things like this. They mock things like this, but they also scoff and mock at Genesis 1 that God created everything. And they scoff and mock at the virgin birth, and they scoff and mock at the, the physical resurrection, and they're unbelievers. Right. And they're lost. Yes, that's right. Yes, sir. And so if, you, if you're not going to let them influence you on these other things, why start letting them influence you now? Amen. <laughs> no. We're the believers or we're not. And if we believe part of the word, we might as well go ahead and believe the rest of it. Right? And so Jesus rebuked this fever. And when I read it those years ago, I thought, now hold on. He's talking to a fever. And my next thought was, can a fever hear? Can a fever hear? I read the next phrase. And it left her. Boom. I thought, yeah. Fevers can hear, obviously. Right? Fevers can hear because the fever did what he told it to do. He rebuked the fever and it left her and immediately she got up, healed and fine, and ministered to him. Can you say glory to God? Glory to God. His word was with power. They were astonished at it. And he spoke to the wind. He spoke to the waves. I, 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 it just blesses me so much when I see, I, I know recently, I don't know that we, we didn't talk about it on the following Sunday, but there had been some storms around different places and we spoke to it and, and I knew you all did too. Am I telling the truth? When you see bad storms and things coming up and approaching, uh, some, you need to speak against them. Right. Command them to, to dissipate. And Jesus said, peace, be still. And part of the problem is the convective activity. It, it boils. And, and what happens, the enemy tries to get involved in these things and use them to still kill and destroy. And so you want to speak against them. And um, it's amazing some things we've already seen just in the past few years of how path will just open up <laughs> and there's a clear place. And, um, and I know there was a hurricane a while back and, and, we, and we and others, others had spoken to it uh, to cut the top of, you know, hurricanes and storms build 
and, and the taller they get, the more monstrous and strong they are. And they can only do it when the jet stream's weak. Because a strong jet stream will cut the head off. And the worst thing for a storm is a bunch of dry air. I mean, if a great big bunch of dry air, it just kills it. It just comes apart. And we've seen that over and over. And, of course, Jesus just summed it all up by saying, peace. <laughs> Be still. And all that stuff we just talked about happened. And then some. <laughs> You don't have to be a meteoro meteorologist, but <laughs> it's interesting to me to see exactly how it happens, you know, and uh, to see a big 60,000 foot tall monster storm just choke on a bunch of dry air and go, uh, 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 and <laughs> die <laughs> and can't bother anybody. <laughs> But don't be silent when these things come up. Speak against them and don't play with it. You're not asking it to do something. You're commanding it to do something. Can you say amen? amen. Look with me in the 12th chapter of Matthew, please. Matthew 12 and 31. Jesus said, I say to you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven to men. But blasphemy against the Holy Spirit shall not be forgiven to men. Whosoever speaks a word against the Son of Man, it will be forgiven him. But whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world nor in that to come. Does it matter what we say? Does it matter what we say about God, about his spirit? Um, and the reason this came up, the father obviously gave him these words to speak, but they had accused Jesus of casting out evil spirits by Beelzebub, the prince of devils, and it was actually the Holy Spirit. So they are attributing the work of the Holy Spirit to the devil. And so is it okay today to say that speaking in tongues is of the devil or the gifts of the spirit or any number of these other things? Uh, if you're not sure what something is, don't just get mouthy and attribute it to the devil. You can be speaking derogatorily, disrespectfully about the Holy Spirit himself. You don't want to be doing that. Either make the tree good and his fruit good or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt. Uh, the tree is known by his fruit or by what it produces. Old generation of vipers, how can you being evil speak good things? Can you tell this whole passage he's talking about speaking and the words that you speak, speaking things against the Holy Spirit? Uh, he said, uh, for out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Whatever's in your heart and whatever you're full of is what's going to come out your mouth, even though you try to hide it. <laughs> it is still, when the pressure's on, whatever you're more full of is what's going to come out of your mouth. And that's why in times of pressure and duress and crisis that a lot of times you'll hear cursing and blasphemy and it's just string of expletives and, and terror and fear. Why? They didn't think about that before they said it. It just came right out of them. Well, the problem is, and sometimes people say, oh, I'm sorry, I know, I'm sorry, I, I shouldn't cuss, I shouldn't use that kind of language. No, the problem is that it was in you. The problem is not that you couldn't hide it in front of us. <laughs> the problem is that it was so much of that still in you. And of course, you know, if you listen to hours and hours of cussing on TV and movies, Y'all are too quiet. <laughs> and you listen to a bunch of junk. Yeah. 
How do you get full of something? By listening to it, by watching it, by thinking on it. And so whatever you get full of, you may be able to act prim and proper under calm circumstances, but when the pressure's on, out of the abundance of the heart, it's going to come out. I know some years ago when I first started learning to fly jets, there was a demonstration pilot that I got to fly with in an airplane. I was as green as could be. I mean, I hardly knew one in from the other, but I was at the place to start learning. And, and uh, we went to this flight. He said, do you want to go with me? I said, yeah. And so, you know, you learn every time you fly and watch. And so uh, we went to this place, and as we were about to leave, the, the people at the place said, uh, how about doing a, a, a flyby for us? And I thought, a flyby? And he said, no, nah, I can't. I got in trouble last time. And uh, <laughs> I thought, okay, good. That sounds good. We, won't, <laughs> we don't want to be doing the flyby. So, and we're just a, a business jet, you know. And we're not in any kind of uh, air show plane. And so uh, we taxied out, and I'm supposed to be flying. And so we, we taxied out to the place, and, and I'm in the left seat, and I'm getting ready to go, and we're clear for takeoff. And they came across and said, uh, be advised, there's, the, there's no authorities around. There's no anybody around this field. And, and so he says, uh, my controls, I have the plane. I thought, oh, boy. And so <laughs> I took my hands off, and, and he took off. And I don't know if you know anything about flying, but, I mean, we had barely broken ground. He sucked the gear up. We must not have been six foot off the ground, and he, he banked. You don't bank <laughs> six foot off the ground. I don't know how we didn't hang a wingtip, but he just darted like a 90 degrees off the side. We are halfway down the runway, and we're about 50 foot off the ground. We're below the buildings, and we're headed straight for some buildings. And we're doing, you know, like, I don't know, 200 miles an hour. And, and you know, the natural feelings is we're about to die. Oh. <laughs> and the reason I'm telling you this is right out of my spirit, I said, well, praise God. <laughs> I didn't cuss. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't go, oh, my God. You know? <laughs> I said, because the thought came to me, well, you may be about to die. And then I thought, well, I'm good to go. <laughs> I'm good to go. Praise God. Praise God. Pray, and, I, and all I said, it just came, it just came out of me. I didn't think of it. Praise God. <laughs> and and it, it blessed me so late. Obviously, I didn't die. I'm still here. But <laughs> it blessed me so much that I wasn't full of fear. Yeah. Yeah. Far as I knew, I'm looking death in the face in a, in a moment or two yes. from now, and I wasn't panicking. I'm, it blessed me so much. And I realized being around the Word for those years now and getting it in me and getting it in me, now when the pressure came, that's what came out. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. And at the last minute, he pulls up, and we go over the buildings, and I thought, whoo, Lord, I don't want to ride with this guy anymore. And I didn't. I didn't fly with him anymore. <laughs> Mercy of God. Mercy of God. How, and why did I tell you all that? Well, you enjoyed it. You enjoyed that, didn't you? Uh, Somebody almost killed your pastor, but it was okay. We, <laughs> uh, out of the abundance of the heart, whatever abundance means, there's a lot of it there. So out of the abundance of what you have a lot of in your heart, inside you, your mouth speaks. And keep, keep reading. He said, a good man out of the good treasure of the heart brings forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth evil things. Did you hear that phrase, brings forth? Yeah. How do you bring forth things? The same way 
God brought forth the heaven and the earth. He spoke and it became and it was. And he's, the master is revealing you bring forth good things by the words that you speak or you bring forth bad things by the words that you speak. And we know that's what he's talking about because verse 36 and 37, he even gets, says it more plain. I say to you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by your words you shall be justified. And by your words you shall be condemned, or that can also uh, be um, translated judged. By your words you'll be justified. By your words you'll be judged. By what? By whose words? By the words of people, what they thought about you. No. No. I said no. You are not going to be justified or judged by the words other people spoke over you. Against you or about you. It'll be the words you spoke. That's what will be brought back to you. You said this. You said that. By your words, you'll be justified. How are we born again? We talked about this previously. You believe it in your heart and, and you say it or you confess it with your mouth. And the Lord said, if you confess me before men, I'll confess you before the Father and his angels. And so what's going to happen is our confession of faith on the earth is going to be brought to remembrance. We said, you'll be, I'm convinced you'll be able to hear uh, different things where you're, you're justified. You'll be able to hear where you said it. I believe in Jesus, the Son of God. Words like that cause you to be justified. Hallelujah. If you say, I don't believe in all that stuff, those words will cause people to be condemned and judged by your words. By your words, everybody say by your words. words. With us, it'd be by my words. By my words, words, I'll be justified, or by my words, I'll be judged. And this is one of the reasons why the Lord commands us not to judge, not to speak judging words, because you're going to be judged by what you say you knew. And I will too. If you say about somebody else, that's wrong. That's just, there's no way that's right. They should never have done that. Well, they're not going to be judged by what you said, but you will be. You'll be judged whether you walk in the light of what you said you knew you should do or not. When you understand this, you stop talking about people. <laughs> and you say, that's between them and the Lord. <laughs> right? Because you don't want your words of judgment against them to be used against yourself. Because you said it and you didn't repent. Now I want you to notice this about that previous phrase. Every idle word that men speak, they'll give an account thereof. Everybody say idle. Every idle word that men shall speak, they'll give an account thereof in the day of judgment. Go to Matthew 20, just a few pages over. Matthew 20 in verse 3. What does this mean? Idle words. It may be different than what you've thought. This exact same word, translated idle, is used here. In Matthew 20 and 3, When it talked about the man that went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace. 
Verse 6, he went out about the eleventh hour, and he found others standing what? Idle. And he said to them, why stand you here all day idle? So the word idle means unemployed. Not working. Inactive. It can also be translated lazy and careless. Useless. Barren. So what are words that we'll have to give an account of? Non-working words. Empty, careless words. Empty, careless words. Why? Why would that matter? It's because of how serious words are. Most folks, you know, most of the church, most of us have not understood the significance of being a speaking spirit. None of the animals have this ability. None of the biologic creations that God has made. We're not just a highly evolved animal, regardless of what people say. They're basing that on a theory, an unproven, untrue theory. Now, granted, there's a lot of similarities between our biology because God created both. It works for them, it works for us. But what the big difference is, is in the realm you can't see. I'm not just a body. You're not just a body. I'm a spirit made in the image and likeness of God who is spirit and the father of spirits. And he made man a speaking spirit. Say it out loud, a speaking spirit. That's one of the big things that make us like God, that make us God-like, and even the sons of God. What do you mean? We can choose what we want, creative power or destructive power, and we can put it into a word and express it and release it. That's God-like. And this is not to be done and handled carelessly. We are doing good or evil or nothing with every word that comes out of our mouth. And having been given such a great privilege, it also comes with a great responsibility. Is there a wonderful, happy side to what I'm talking about? If we learn how to make our words work, put our words to work for us. Jesus didn't just speak to express how he felt. Jesus didn't just talk didn't just chat, didn't just chew the fat, huh? didn't just yak. Now, why do we have all these words for this? Yak, chat, chew the fat, huh? And then a popular one is, I'm just saying. What does that mean, I'm just saying? I'm talking, I'm making sounds, but it don't mean a thing. (laughs) Sounds like idle words. Non-working words. Words that don't work. When there's an opportunity to choose a word that works and make that word work for you and work for people around about you. Do we really have this ability? 
Do we really have this opportunity? Come on, you don't, you don't even have to make a stretch to know there have been times that you've said things to people you should not have said. Right? It did not help their day. Right? It brought up something that made them feel bad, that made them look bad. Huh? You shouldn't have said it. And there have been times you said things to people that encouraged them, that, that took a weight off of them. You could see it in their eye and they thought, well, I hadn't thought about it that way. Well, yeah, that's what the word says, <laughs> right? And, and, and a relief and a release and they, they, they realize they're loved and they're valued and they're encouraged. Well, you can just see very quickly and easily how powerful of a, an ability we've been given. Right? I mean, people have turned and gone and committed suicide yes, Lord. after people said terribly crude and ugly and, and, and demeaning things to them. Yes. Now, that's not okay. It's still their responsibility. They didn't have to do that. That's right. But why did the person have to say that to them either? Yeah. Right? Yes, sir. And then there's been people that were about to give up and quit and throw everything away, but somebody came and said some words to them, and they said, I'm not going to quit. That's right? right? Yeah. And they got up and hit it again and became a great success. Yes. Words can kill. Yes. Words can make alive. Yes. Life and death is in the power right. of the tongue. Yes. Look with me in Ephesians, if you would. Ephesians, the fourth chapter, and the 29th verse. It is serious. I know a lot of times people, they, they just rather not read verses like what Jesus said. Every idle word. He'll give in the cat. People are just like, okay, I know this there. Next. <laughs> <laughs> Next. But if he said it, it matters. We, we should uh, take it seriously. And will the truth just depress you? Huh? Will the truth just make you upset and say, no, the truth will make you free. And so if there are verses that you just kind of like to avoid and say, well, let's just don't even talk about that. It's because you don't understand. Obviously, you're not doing it. You're not understanding it. But there is great light and truth there that will free you, liberate you when you do. Sit out loud. Lord, open my eyes to how to practice what you're talking about with my words in Jesus' name. Amen. Show me how, how to do this. In Ephesians 4.29 he said, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. How much? None. How much? None. How much? None. How much? None. Well, now, you know, everybody says dumb stuff every day, right? That's a true question. Huh? <laughs> huh? I mean, are... Are you really? Is it possible you could make it through a whole day and not say any corrupt stuff? Yes. Is it? Yes. <laughs> well, the Lord wouldn't tell you to do something that you can't do. Somebody say, it is possible for me to go all day and all night and not miss it in what I say. It's possible to go all week. It's possible to go all month. Jesus went his whole life. <laughs> Jesus went 33 years and never messed up one time in what he said. That is perfection. That's perfection. And before you say, well, yeah, and I've already messed up, so I, I can't measure up. That's why forgiveness is available, yeah. right? 
so that you can start over again clean. His mercies are new every morning. You can start over because of the washing of the blood like you hadn't missed it. But if you don't even try, right? And if you don't hold yourself to the high standard that is available, we don't measure ourselves against each other. That's called being unwise. That's called being foolish. Because if they're not doing so hot and you're not doing as good as them, and you think, well, I'm almost doing as good as them. Yeah, but they ain't doing very well. <laughs> Get your eyes above them to the master who went his entire life and never spoke corrupt words. Hallelujah. In, uh, it, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. There are a lot of things that people are saying, church people are saying in church and around places that's actually much worse than cussing. And they don't realize it. Much worse. Do you remember when uh, God told the people he had given them the promised land and uh, he, they sent the spies and they came back and, and 10 of them said, it's a bad land. Man, it's a land that will eat you up and spit you out, and I mean, we're all going to die if we go over there because these giants are 10 foot tall, and they got walled cities and, and iron chariots, and there ain't no way. And the Lord said it, it angered him because he told them it was a good land. It was a good land that flowed with milk and honey. It, it, was, a, it was a jewel of lands that he had handpicked for them and he told them it was theirs that he had given it to them and now go get it and they said it's not ours they said it's a bad land it will kill you and the scripture said they brought up an evil report against the land that's worse than saying cuss words I'm not saying cuss words are good but that's even worse because some of these cuss words, these expletives that people say, they don't really, they're not really putting much meaning into them. Yeah. What are they believing about it? But when people get all twisted up and they say, I'm telling you, we're going to die out there. That's even worse. Yeah. Why? Because you're saying what the Lord says is not true. Right. You're flat contradicting him. It's rebellious. It's defiant. You know, the Lord said this. I'll hold your place there in Ephesians and go to Malachi, the third chapter. Now, this is the tithing chapter, but part, portions of this that a lot of times folks don't get into, they just stop at the end of the tithing part. Um, look, look in verse 10, Matthew 3.10. Yeah, Malachi, thank you. Malachi, 310. What are y'all laughing about? <laughs> Malachi 310. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse. There may be meat and food in my house. Prove me now herewith, says the Lord of hosts, if I'll not open the windows of heaven, pour you out a blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. Keep going the next couple of verses here. I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. Everybody say, thank you, Lord. Thank you. He will not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast a fruit before the time in the field, said the Lord of hosts. All nations will call you blessed, for you'll be a delightsome land, says the Lord of hosts. Your words have been stout against me, says the Lord. Hold on. What? What? See, People try to say, well, you know, God is almighty and he's on the throne and everything he says is power and changes things. But all these billions of ant-like inhabitants, you know, scurrying around the earth, what they think and what they say doesn't matter. Their pitiful little existence doesn't matter. Well, that doesn't, that doesn't agree with this. I said that doesn't agree with this. 
uh, especially when you're talking about God's people, his people, and that's who he's talking about here. Your words have been stout against me, says the Lord, and yet you say, what? What have we spoken so much against you? So they, they're not aware of how God is seeing and hearing what they're saying. They're not aware of it. They're like, what, what do you mean? Our words st stout against you. Verse 14, you have said, God quotes them. You have said, can you see? By your words, you'll be justified. By your words, you'll be judged. What's the Lord going to say? You said. You said this. And it won't just be just a random off the cuff thing. The things that matter most are the things you believe and say. But you keep saying something long enough, you start believing it more and more. Even if you didn't in the beginning. You have said it is vain to serve God. And that greatly displeased God. You, that you've said, what profit is it that we've kept his ordinance? These kind of things grieve the spirit. And that actually, that, that verse is the next verse after Ephesians where it says, let no corrupt communication come out of your mouth. The very next verse says, and grieve not the Holy Spirit. So the things that grieve him are particularly the things that come out of our mouth. You have said, God said, you said it's vain to serve God. The kind of things that will really get you in trouble and, and cut off blessing and open up the door to the enemy is saying, it don't do any good to pray. You know, I tried that tithing stuff. It doesn't do any good. You know, that confession, confession stuff that name it, claim it stuff. I tried all that. It doesn't do any good. God said those words are against him. And they are stout against him and they limit the Holy One of Israel not for himself but they limit what he does in your life. Because you could be saying it works for me. I'm telling you, it works for me. You know, that's why I, I brought up again what Brother Jerry Savelle taught. He is convinced that the favor of God is on him every moment when he, every morning when he opens his eyes and when he goes out the door, favor of God is on him and looking for him and great and amazing things happen for him all the time. He believes that. He says it all the time. And there's evidence of it yes. abounding. Yep. But how many people talk like that? How many church going people talk like that? Not just one time in a special meeting, but every day. Right. How many people talk like that? Yeah. No. People don't. They're like, they hear, you see here, people hear testimonies. You know, somebody was given a car, $70,000 car. Given a car. There's more than one of them that Kevin talked about today. And some people will go, well, that never happens to me. If you say so. Do you see that or not? If you were smart, you would say. Now, I'm not just making this up. The disciples came to Jesus and said, Lord, increase our faith. You know the next thing he said? He said, if you had faith, like a grain of mustard seed, you would say. Isn't that right? If you had faith, you would say. Right? So you hear something good, what do you say? Why do you think we have you stand up after these good testimonies and say, what he's done for others. 
We're not wasting your time with these things. Somebody say, it's happening for me. It's happening for me. Good things, great things are happening for me. The mercy of God, the favor of God, the blessing of the Lord is on my life. It's, it's helping me. It's, it's prospering me. It's healing me. It's delivering me. The problem is, many Christians are like, man, it seems like I get, a, get ahead a little bit and just get knocked back all the way. Get, get a step or two ahead and get knocked back three. Yeah, man, money sure goes, doesn't it? Seem like you just get paid and it's all gone. Would you stop? <laughs> Would you quit it? Amen. You'd be better off cussing. <laughs> I'm telling you. And I don't want you to do either one. But it would hurt you probably less to stand on the corner and cuss. Now you're laughing, but do you understand what we've been talking about or not? Oh, yeah. You're just saying stupid expletives. Maybe you don't believe in it that much. But when you get all worked up and you go, nothing ever works right for me. And nothing I do is ever good enough for them. I can't do anything right. Man, the devil is setting you up for so much failure. He's pushing you with those feelings of bitterness and angst and all that stuff to get you to say that out of your, and see, you are a God-like being. You have the ability to speak forth and bring forth things. And when you say that, he has a right. He can make assignments right then for his demonic evil spirits to cause that to happen in your life. What? That nothing goes right for you. They can work overtime on people so that they're unsatisfied with you. Lie to them about you and all this kind of stuff. You could put your words to work for yourself. Huh? And instead of saying, they don't like me. I don't know why they don't like me. But I can tell. And you look over at them, and maybe they're just having some indigestion and have a foot thing on their face. And you say, see that? You see the way they looked at me? And they just needed an acid. <laughs> but in your mind, it's all worked up that they don't like you. They hate me. They hate me. They hate me. And you could be saying, I have favor. With God and man. Hmm? Huh? You can start off your day. Lord, give me favor with everybody that I'll deal with today. Prepare the way before me. Incline their hearts toward me. Even the heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord. Is that right? And he can turn it. I said he can turn it. Whoever he wants to. Oh. Does it matter the things, the words that come out of our mouth? Yes, yes. You, you have said, God said, your words have been stout against me. You have said it's vain to serve God. Make up your mind you are never going to say such foolish, disrespectful things that God says is stout against him. I'm never going to say his things don't work. Or it does no good to serve him. It does good. Yes. It pays. <laughs> oh, come on, say it out loud. It pays, it pays to, serve to serve God. It pays big. Oh, it, pays big. it pays big. In this, in this life and in the next, it, it pays big to serve God. It pays to pray, it pays to go to church. It pays to give. It pays to work. It pays Amen. to do what the Lord directs us to do. It pays big. 
Go with me, if you would, to James, the third chapter. James 3. Now, this, uh, this whole chapter here is one of the most significant things you'll, you'll read in the Word about words. Um, the, most of the chapter is given to the, the subject. And uh, I want to read this out of the Young's literal translation, verse 1, down through most of the chapter. And even though we, we, you might have heard some of this before, you can be assured there's a lot here that you haven't heard, haven't seen. So uh, say it out loud again, Lord, open my eyes, Lord, open my eyes. To, understand to understand and to get yes. what you have said, you have said. In, these words. in these words. He said here, uh, many teachers, and this is the Young's literal, so it doesn't read as fluid as in our language, but it is very, very accurate. He said, many teachers become not. Don't, all of you don't try to become a teacher. Having known that greater judgment we shall receive. And, and we just got through talking about that. Uh, if I get up and I teach and I say, you should do this, then you're not going to be judged by what I said. I will be. Do I, now, now you're responsible for what you heard, especially if the Lord gave it to me to say, but I will be, if I said you should do this and I don't do it, can you see that? I must be a doer of what I tell other people to do. And, and you too. But then, you know, teachers are telling more people. Verse 2, we all make many stumbles. If anyone in word does not stumble, that one is a perfect man, able to bridle also the whole body. Now, don't let the word perfect, don't get hung up on that. It means, uh, it is from the, the Greek uh, teleos, it, it has to do with that which completes to the end. And so, it describes complete development. It describes full maturity. I, I like the term fully developed. If you don't miss it in what you say, you're, not, you're no longer a baby Christian. You're not partially developed or undeveloped. You are a grown-up, fully developed. What does that mean? Like the Christ. Because that's what Ephesians talks about, you know, growing up unto the, per, the, the full stature the full measure of the Christ. We know Jesus didn't just go all day without missing what he said. He went his whole life. That's fully developed. Right? And the servant's not above his master, but everybody that's perfect, the scripture said, and again, that's that word, fully developed will be as the master. It's possible for us to operate like he did if we choose to. If you make a mistake, thank God for the blood. Yes. Right? Yes. Just repent, go on, but you don't say, ah, oh, you know, I'm not Jesus. I can't control everything that I say. Not if you don't even try, for sure. <laughs> you can, if you will. Most people won't. Yeah. We can't control them. Right. But do we believe these things that we're looking at in the Word? Do we believe these things? Yes. Do we want our words to be non working? Or can we make them work for ourselves yes. and work for others? Yes. Keep, keep reading. Uh, able to bridle, other words say control the whole body. Is that true or not? That if I can control my words, I can control my body. Amen. Is that true or not? Yes. See, most people don't believe that. But you'll find areas that you've not been able to reach your goals are areas that you keep having the same problem with over and over again, the first place to look is your mouth. 
What have you been saying? Hmm? Stop calling things your bad eye, your weak knee. If you want to lose weight, stop making fat jokes. I'm not laughing. Stop it. Quit making fun of yourself about having extra pounds. Unless you don't care. I said if you want to, if you're serious about it, and stop saying something's wrong with your metabolism. Stop it. Stop talking about how old you are and how things don't work right anymore. And you're getting older and you're getting weaker and you're getting this and that. Is it true that if I control my words, I can control my entire body? Is that true or not? The Bible says it is. I said the Bible says it is. Especially anything that you've had a, a problem with. Listen to yourself carefully about what you are saying about that. And change it. Make your word work for you instead of against you. Keep reading. Keep reading the rest of it. We put bits in the mouths of the horses for their obeying us and their whole body we turn about. Lo, also the ships being so great and by fierce winds being driven are led about by a very small helm, whithersoever the impulse of the helmsman doth counsel. So also the tongue is a little member and doth boast greatly. Lo, a little fire, how much wood it does kindle. Now, He's using examples, and he gives us three of how the tongue works. Do we believe the word? Yes, sir. He said it's like a bit in a horse's mouth. Well, that bit compared to that big horse and all his strength and all his muscle, that's a small thing. But that horse, the direction of that horse can be steered with this apparatus of a bit. He compares a ship and compared to the size of the ship and the size of the ocean that it's in and the force of the waves and the wind, that helm is tiny. That rudder is tiny, but you can totally change the direction of the ship. You can totally change the direction of the horse. The horse can be going full out north. And with the bit, is that right? You can turn that horse until he is headed the complete opposite direction. He's going, the other, you know, if he was going north, he's going south now. Same thing with a ship. Now, a giant ship on the ocean, you don't move the rudder and it goes, whoop. <laughs> no. You, you, you turn the rudder and it goes like this and not much happens instantaneously. But here this great big thing changes a few degrees. Is that right? And if you keep the, what if you move the rudder back? Well, then it, it, it doesn't move much. It moved a couple of degrees. Now it moves back to where it was. Now we're going to see in just a moment. Well, well keep reading. Let's, let's do it now. He said, the tongue is a little member. It's a fire. Yeah, verse 6. It's a fire. And he, he started out talking about a starter fire. The world of unrighteousness, the tongue is set in our members, which is spotting our whole body. Again, he talks about the body. Setting on fire the course of nature and is set on fire by Gehenna. Hell is trying to start destruction with people's mouths. Heaven is trying to minister life and healing through people's mouths. Keep reading. 
Every nature, both of beasts and fowls, both of creeping things and things of the sea is subdued, has been subdued by the human nature. The tongue, no one of men is able to subdue. It's an unruly evil full of deadly poison. And people read that and go, well, see, there ain't no use in trying. (laughs) Then wonder why he wrote us and told us this. Since it was hopeless to start with. No, he's talking about controlling things outside yourself. Taming animals outside yourself. Obviously, you can control your tongue because he's telling you to do it. But you cannot control other people's tongues. Cannot. I said cannot. So quit trying to be the confession police. (laughs) Right? Quit trying to straighten everybody. This is for you to straighten out you. Now the more you watch what you say, the more you will notice what other people say, but it doesn't mean you're supposed to try to straighten them out. You're supposed to set them a good example, right? And they are watching you whether they act like it or not. And they're paying attention. And sometimes you can say something, all you have to say is, hmm, I wouldn't say that. You're not telling them what they should. You're saying, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say that. Not the same as trying to straighten them out. Keep going. He said, verse 9, let's look at the next one. With it we bless God the Father and the Father, and, and with it we curse men that are made according to the similitude of God. Next verse. Out of the same mouth comes forth blessing and cursing, It does not need, my brethren, these things so to happen. This should not be. What shouldn't happen? We say it like this, talking out of both sides of your mouth. We just got through talking about your ship's going into a storm. It's a bad one. You shouldn't go over there. It's clear skies over here. What should we do? Come on, help me out. Oh, God, don't let me go in the storm. Oh, God, please. I don't want to go in the storm. Oh, but I'm going in the storm. Oh, God, don't let me go in the storm. God's not steering. I said God's not steering. Steering is your job. It's your ship. It's your body. It's your life. Oh, God, I don't want to go in the storm. So, (laughs) huh? Now we're laughing, but it really is this simple. Huh? So what? Oh, I'm going into the storm. I'm going into the storm. All you're doing is holding a straight course. I'm going into the storm. Oh, God, I'm going into the storm. I'm going into the storm. Could you do anything about it? People go right through the worst things in life and never even bobble or try to turn out of it not understanding that the power is in their mouth. You could begin to say something else. I'm going out of the storm. I'm going into the clear. Come on, are y'all listening? I'm coming out of this in Jesus' name. But what if you say, oh God, no, I'm going into the storm. I'm going to... No, I'm coming out. I'm coming out of it. Oh, I'm going into the storm. Oh, no, I thought I was going. Oh, I'm not going. I'm not going. Blessing and cursing, going, not going, this is one of the biggest problems. A lot of times folks will, you know, come to a service like this and they go, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, I got it. I I, I said that with Brother Keith. The favor's on me. And then by Thursday... I don't know what's wrong with these crazy people around me. (laughs) Nothing is going my way. And blessing and cursing. Sometimes life, sometimes death. Well, you understand what I'm saying? If you do this and you do this and you do this and you do this, you don't change course. 
All you did was bobble, but you stayed on the same course. What you got to do is quit saying, stop talking death and failure, and you got to stop it. Not cut it down. Not reduce it. Stop it. Not just around church time. At home. At work. Stop it and get the words that God gives you to say about this situation in your mouth and that's all you say and you say that consistently. You say that consistently. Well, what that does is it's holding the altered course. And so you do that day after day after day after day after day. You stop going into the problem. Can you see this? And then you start going out into the blessing and out of the problem. I call my body healed. I call my body strong. Didn't say you felt like it. Didn't say you looked like it. I'm turning the wheel. I call every bill paid. I call every debt paid off. Yes. Come on, can you see that? Yes, sir. I have the mind of Christ. Yes. You won't get me to say I'm dumb. Uh -uh. <laughs> huh? No. That's when we tell our little ones, I'm quick. I'm bright. I'm sharp. I'm good looking. I'm very rich. And a major blessing. These are not just little cute things. These are life-changing things, especially if you believe it and you say it day after day and week after week. It builds something in you. It sets your body, your mind, your life on a course, a course of light and life and victory and blessing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But it requires discipline because yes. everybody's got feelings. Everybody's got emotions. Yeah. And especially if you watch and listen to the wrong thing, you get junk in you. Yeah. And then when the pressure comes on, <laughs> the junk comes out and you talk death and defeat and stuff that you've been listening to. Or, or you could read your chapter every day you could come to church in good meetings. You could feed on good things. You could talk with faith people and you could be full of light and life and faith. And then when the pressure comes on you, it looks like you're about to die or whatever, you go, praise God. Praise, <laughs> praise God. I'm not even scared. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Life-giving words right there. Life-giving words right there. Hallelujah. He's not steering your life. You're steering it. You're steering it. With your words, you are steering your life either into death or into life. Amen. I believe we receive it. Amen. I believe we're going to be a people in the earth that is fully developed, full grown, effective, not only in walking in the good things of God, the life of God for our lives, but we're making a difference in other people's lives. Hallelujah. Stand with me. We're going to say, we're going to put God's word in our mouth before we leave. We're going to do this together. Adam, let's just roll through them. So these are confessions that I've actually written out. Uh, most of these are some that I've had for many, many years that I've had in my mouth and that I declare uh, over my family, over my beyond church family. Hallelujah. I can see the effect of these words in my life. Amen. Fully developed full grown, completely there, perfect uh, in, in my words and what I say. No, not there yet. I have more work to do, but I've started. But I've started and I believe the word. I believe the word that we heard tonight 
that there's life and there's death in my tongue. And if you believe that, if you, if you just say, I believe God's word, then you'll be so eager to speak life words. And not to be discouraged. Let me encourage you with this because we get so discouraged and want to quit sometimes because we don't see it right then, right then, right then. We're a people who want things right now. Is that true? I'm like that. You know, really. Uh, you know, if I'm hurting, I, I, I want the pain to go now. Uh, if I'm needing money, I want the money now. Right? And so, and so we get discouraged when we don't see things right away. And, and instead of doing, I said this is important when he was talking about the ship. Right? And so we turn it. And we, and we turn it and we start going a different way by saying, staying steady on what God says about any situation. I'm so confident that God is not a liar. That he watches over his word to perform it. And if I'll just stay with him, if I'll just stay with him, if I will just stay with him, that the word that he's given me, the word in my mouth and the word that I decree, it shall come to pass. Hallelujah. It'll take me out of any storm I'm in. And it'll take me right into life and peace and the goodness of God. It'll work in my life. It's going to work in my children's life. It's going to work uh, in, in this ministry. The words that we say over it. Amen. Hey, let's say it together. All right. I'm going to start with the first one. <clears throat> and I'll probably say something. All right. Let's say it together. Our children and grandchildren are taught of the Lord, obedient to his will, and great is their peace and undisturbed composure. They are established in righteousness. Oppression is far from them, for they shall not fear. So we get these words in our mouth, and we declare, <coughs> declare this over our children, and then we don't uproot God's living word over them by saying, I don't know what's wrong with that kid. I just, I've tried and I've tried and I've tried and he's just hell bent on going the other way. So that's just taking our words and we'll go this way with the word of God and then we'll just speak death words and bring it right back. Amen. God's promise to me and God's promise to you is that my children are going to be taught of him. Obedient to his will. You'll not catch me saying any other thing over my children but that right there. They'll follow after God all the days of their lives. Hallelujah. Let's, let's do the second one. We are increased more and more, spirit, soul, body, relationally, financially, influentially, us and our children. And you can see that the scripture reference right there. I'm not just pulling these words out of my whatever. This is God's word. This is God's word. And he says in Psalms 115 that he increases us more and more. What does that mean? That means I'm not expecting to be diminished in any way, spirit, soul, and body. God's a God of increase. And so I'm, I'm increasing. My family's increasing in wisdom, in revelation, knowledge, <clears throat> in understanding. My, my, my family is increasing. We have a strong mind. Amen. Body, increased health. Increased health. And I, I'm serious. I, I'm, I'm so with Brother Keith on this. Knock it off. Knock it off the words uh, of diminish and weakness. And, and my body just doesn't do this. And my body just doesn't do this. Or my mind doesn't do this. Where in God's word does it say that about you? If it doesn't say it in God's word about you, then we need to be getting it out of our mouth. <clears throat> We're calling God a liar. We're calling God a liar. Let's do the, last, the next one. We are filled with the love of God, the wisdom of God, and the fire of God. Our souls are at rest and flourishing in peace and understanding. Our relationships are strong, loving, kind, forgiving, and flourishing. Wealth and riches are in our house, and our righteousness endures forever. 
we are ever able and ever ready to be a blessing to those around us and to give abundantly to every good work. We are kingdom carriers in our generation. Amen. <clears throat> we call our bodies healed, whole, and strong. They serve us well and in health and strength all the days of our lives. No plague, no pestilence, no evil, no destruction comes near our dwelling. I I'm going to stop. Let put a smile on your face. Man, if we believe this, I mean, I'm looking out here. If we believe this, if we believe this, say, I believe God's word. And God's word works for me. With long life, God satisfies us and shows us his salvation. All grace abounds to us, and we have all sufficiency in all things, and we abound unto every good work. One of my faves. We are living memorials in the earth to show that the Lord is upright and faithful to his promises. We lay hands on the sick, and they do recover. Weapons may be formed, but no weapon formed against us prospers. It is impossible for a weapon to succeed against the blood of Jesus that covers us. The blood that saves, keeps, heals, preserves, protects, delivers, and brings life to us. Now, in the presence of our enemies, and throughout all of eternity. Hallelujah. There is no lack in our household because the Lord is our shepherd. Man, that's a good one to have in your mouth all the time. There's no lack. The Lord is our shepherd. We do not lack. We do not want. There's no want. There is no lack. Hallelujah. One more page. There is no depression or hopelessness in our household because we know and are convinced we will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I call our house and this house blessed in Jesus' name. Our eyes are bright. Our hearts are filled with truth. Our lips speak words of life and truth. And we will be a blessing to many. And 2024 will be the best year of our lives. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that your word is life. I thank you that we're not only hearers of the word, but we are doers of the word. I declare over this congregation that you are strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And what you are facing in this life today with the words of your mouth, with God's words in your mouth, you will be coming out on the other side. I thank you, Father, for strength in Jesus' name. Say, I will not quit. I cannot be defeated. And I will not quit. God's watching over his word to perform it. Amen. Give him something to work with. Keep the enemy out of your household and give God the words he needs to bring life into your situation. Amen. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. You're dismissed and uh, we will see you on Sunday.